Perry of the circus. For Jerry of the circus. Oh, now hold still there, boy, Rags. <laughs> You're going to get your combing and brushing whether you want it or not. <laughs> yes, sir. You've got to get your beauty treatment. Oh, now what? Oh, it's Jerry, huh? Hey, you, Rags. Oh, boy, never mind, never mind. Hey, Bob. Poor Rags. Hey, looks like our friend Jerry's in quite a hurry. Hey, Bob, where's my work shoes? Well, let's see now, aren't they? Uh, Never mind, I found them. Well, seems like you're in a mighty big rush, young fella. Yeah, I am. Well, what's the hurry? I'll be right out, soon as I get this other shoe on. Well, I don't know when I've seen you move so fast. I've got plenty to do today. <laughs> you must have. There. I'm all set. Well, you gonna let me in on the reason for this burst of speed? Sure. Well, in the first place, there's a telegram for me over at the office wagon. Oh, telegram? Uh-huh. Eh? It's from Mr. Grayson about the safety deposit box. Well, now that's sure good news, Jerry. You've been waiting an awful long time to hear about it. I hope it's the kind of news you've been waiting for. Me too. But that doesn't explain why you put on your work shoes. Well, when I get through finding out about the telegram, I have to hurry right over to the horse stop and help Whitey with Splendor. Oh. But didn't you know? Splendor's awful sick with pneumonia or something like that. Oh, say, that's too bad. I did hear he wasn't feeling so good, but I didn't think it was so serious. Well, I don't know what I can do to help, but I promised Waddy I'd be sure to be there to do all I can. Oh, I sure, Jerry. You should see what you can do. You and that colt are pretty good pals. Now, if he's sick, you don't want to let him down now. You go ahead and run along now. There's nothing you wanted me for, was there? Oh, no, no, not a thing, Jerry. This is not much for any of us to do until we can get the circus back in order again and get out on the road. Well, I'll have to hurry then. <laughs> No, Rags, you can't come with me. You stay here with Bump. See you later. Okay, Jerry. I'll be right around here when you get through. And Bumps, I'll let you know what's in the telegram when I get through at the horse stop. Okay. Oh, Mr. Randall. Mr. Randall. Yes, Jerry? I I was just going over the office wagon. Good. That's just where I'm heading for. You got my telegram over there, haven't you? Oh, yes, Jerry. Slipped my mind for a minute. I've had so much to think about. I guess you have. Yes, sir. That cyclone was just about the worst thing I've ever encountered. Yeah, but we'll get rolling again. All right. Go ahead, Jerry. Okay. Now, let's see. Where did I put that wire of yours? Jim and Mr. Thomas and I have had so much figuring to do, my desk is pretty much upset. Oh. Oh, here we are. Here it is, Jerry. Thanks. Boy, I sure hope it's good news. Mm, I do, too. Uh, shall I read it? Uh, yes, yes, go ahead. Let's see what it is. All right. Open deposit box. Contents, family papers, photograph of your mother, and only thing of intrinsic... Intrinsic? Intrinsic value. Deed to 40 acres of property in Montana in name of Timothy Dugan. Last will is all to you. And probating will and having property transferred to your name. We'll send particulars and deed by mail later. Richard Grayson. Well, Jerry, that's what you've been waiting so long to hear. <laughs> Boy, I, I think that's keen, don't you? Well... The property might have gold on it or even oil. Boy, I'll bet it's worth a lot. Well, let's hope so anyway. It must be real valuable or Dad wouldn't have bought it in the first place. What's the matter? You don't seem very happy about it. Well, Montana's a big state, Jerry, and a great deal of it is just wide open plain. Yeah, but... Oh, don't you think... 
Oh, it must be valuable. Yeah, sure, Jerry. Yeah, the property must have some value. No doubt Mr. Grayson will find out something about it and let you know. Maybe it's got a silver mine on it. Well, you'll find out pretty soon now. At least the suspense of knowing what was in the box is over with. Hmm? Oh, I just couldn't <laughs> hardly ask for more. No. Just think I own 40 acres of land. That's pretty good, I think. Not bad, Jerry. Not bad at all for a boy like you. <laughs> and there's a picture of my mother, too. I'm sure glad I'm going to get that. Yeah. Yes, that is nice, Jerry. Well, careful with that wire now. I will. I'm going to put it right here in my pocket. I want to show it to Bumps uh, after I get through at the horse stop, I mean. Oh, you're going to help uh, Whitey out a little? Yeah. Splendor's pretty sick, I guess. Well, I think I'll take a walk over there with you and see just how bad off that little cold is. Uh, you ready now? Uh-huh. Well, all right. Come on, then. Okay. Yeah, I'd hate to have anything happen to Splendor. I've sort of been counting on him for big things. He's got pneumonia, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's what uh, Whitey seems to think. Well, we'll find out what the doctor had to say. I guess Whitey will do all he can. Oh, you bet he will. And he's uh, he's mighty handy with horses. I've seen him nurse some pretty sick animals back to health. He told me that once in winter quarters, he had an awful little time with some of the work horses. Yes, yes, I remember that year, but... We didn't lose one animal. Uh, Whitey runs that winter quarters like a nursery. He sure babies his charges. That's because he loves them. Mm, you're right that time, Jerry. Oh, there goes a the doctor out of the horse stop now. Mm-hmm. Gee, I, I sure hope Splendor's better. Eh, we'll find out in a minute now. Oh, yeah, there's Whitey just inside the tent. Oh, Whitey. Uh, hello there. Yeah. What did the uh, doctor have to report about Splendor? Ah, uh, poor little coach, not so good, Mr. Randall. Mm. He's in a bad way. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. What did the doctor say was the matter with him? And just what I thought, distemper. Distemper? But I thought you said he had pneumonia. Well, that's the same thing, Jerry. In an animal, we call it distemper, but it's really pneumonia. Uh, what are you doing for him, Whitey? Well, there's not a whole lot can be done. The doc gave him some medicine, and all we can do is hope he'll pull through. Can we see him? Sure, sure. Come on back, poor little fella. Look, Mr. Randall, look at Lady here. She sure looks sad about her little cold. Mm -hmm. uh, she does look like she's grieving. Yeah, that's what she's doing, all right. Hasn't touched her oats since Splendor took sick. Those animals know when something's wrong. Uh, here's Splendor, Mr. Randall. Mm. Oh, this is a shame, Whitey. Just look at that poor little coat. He's a sick one, all right. Uh, you've got him covered up with enough blankets. Yeah, that's the most important thing we can do for him. you got to keep him warm. Yep, keep him warm and white. Uh, didn't the doctor have any word of encouragement? No, he didn't. He said the little horse was pretty bad off. However, he did say if Splendor gets through the day, he'll have a 50-50 chance. He's got to get well. He's just got to. I sure hate to lose him. Don't you think it might help if you put Lady down here next to him? Well, no, I don't know. Well, that sounds like a good idea, Jerry. I don't see how it would hurt any, do you, Whitey? No, it wouldn't hurt, and it might do some good at that. Uh, Jerry, go get Lady and bring her down here. Okay. Uh, what's the truth about Splendor, Whitey? Well, it's just like you said, Mr. Ann. If the little cold pulls through the day, you'll have a 50-50 chance to get well. Uh, I thought maybe you might be holding something back on a kind of Jerry bean. Here. No, no, that's the story. Come on, Lady. Come on, now. Right over here, girl. You're right here by Splendor. You want to see your baby, don't you? Uh, just tie Lady up here, Jerry. Nope. Uh, just look at the way she's watching Splendor. Yeah, that's what she wanted, all right. Wanted to be near Colt. There, now. How's that, huh? Hmm. I should have thought of that myself, Jerry. And I've got another idea. Yeah? What's that? Well, you said Splendor had to uh, be warm, didn't you? Why, sure. That's all we can do for him, just keep him good and warm. Well, what's the idea, Jerry? Well... I thought maybe if those blankets were warmed, it might help some. I don't believe I get you, Jerry. Well, it's all right to keep him covered up. But I think it'd be a whole lot better if we kept changing the blankets, always keeping a warm blanket next to him. That way, he'd be good and warm. Mm, that's a good idea, but how do you aim to warm the blankets? Well, either over by the forge or... Well, we can get a kerosene stove going and heat them that way. I think Jerry scored again. Well, there's a fire in the forge now. Go ahead and take one of those blankets and get it warm. Okay, Whitey. Well, I guess there's not much I can do around here to help, so I better be getting back to business. No, and Jerry and I can do whatever there is to do for this poor little critter. I guess you've got plenty on your mind, let alone worrying about the sick list and the horse top. You bet I have. You think we'll get away tomorrow all right, Mr. Randall? Yes, yes, I think we will, Whitey. The extra canvas I sent for should get into Harper City before we arrive. But we won't be doing a show tomorrow night. No, no, but uh, if everything goes all right, we'll do a matinee day after tomorrow. You know, to tell the truth, uh, I didn't think we'd get rolling so fast. Well, I didn't either, but we were fortunate in patching up most of the damage right here. Eh, that cyclone was bad enough. I guess it could have been worse. You bet. 
Well, I better get going now. See you later, Whitey. Okay, Mr. Randall. Uh, take it easy, lady. Easy, girl. We're doing all we can for Splendor. Okay, Jerry. Now, get ready to change the blanket while this one is still warm. All right, here we are. Now, when I take this one off, you throw that warm one over him. Uh, you, you ready? Uh-huh. All right, now, quick now. We don't want Splendor to get a chill. There. Now, put those other two blankets on, too. Now, now, now better take this one uh, that was next to him and, and get it warm. Make sure it's good and dry. Poor little colder's perspiring something fierce. Is that a bad sign? No, it's good, Jerry. He's got to get over this fever. It gets just so high, and then it starts to go down. Oh. The doc says to expect the crisis at any time now. Well, what does that mean, crisis? Well, that means the turning point, Jerry. Splendor will either start to get better or, and lose his fever, or he'll grow steadily worse. No, sir, he's going to get better. I hope you're right, Jerry. Oh, I think he's getting better already. What makes you think so? Well, look at him. He's not sneezing so much, and he looks up at Lady now that she's next to him. Yeah, it does seem like he's taking a little interest in his ma. Well, come on, let's get that blanket dried out and warm. Okay. You know, Jerry, there, there's something to that. I, I mean, a sick animal taking on new interest when there's another animal near them that they like. Sure, I know that. Well, look at the new one, the alley cat over at the menagerie. Yep, that's an example. The new got well in no time once it took an interest in that cat. Hey, it looks like that fire is dying down in the forest. Yeah, I'll fix that right now. There. Uh, how's that for a fire? That's better. Uh, I'll hold one end of the blanket, Jerry. All right, here you are. Yeah, speaking of strange animal friendships, brought to mind a funny thing that happened when I was a boy back home on the farm. What was that, Whitey? Well, sir, we had an old mule that Dad used to work, and she was a good worker, too. Not stubborn, huh? Not for a long time, but she finally got that way. And let me tell you about it. All right, go ahead. Hey, uh, hold up your end of the blanket. Up higher there so the fire can get out. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, this old mule and a goat we had struck up a friendship. A goat? <laughs> That's a good one. Yep, and it got so the mule wouldn't do a lick of work unless the goat was running along beside her. I'll never forget that. Those two were always together. Even when the mule was working, huh? <laughs> That's the way it had to be if we expected to get anything done. Well, come on now. That blanket's okay. Let's get back to Splendor. All right. I don't like to leave him alone too long at a time. If you've got anything to do, Whitey, I'll, I'll be glad to stay with Splendor and watch him. Well, now, I'll, I'll just take you up on that, Jerry. I have got a lot to do, so if you'll keep an eye on that poor little feller, he'll help out a lot. Hey, look it. What, Jerry? Look at Splendor now. He's shivering worse, it seems like. Hmm. It does look like he got another chill. Jerry, this little colt is plenty sick. <laughs> 